All right. With that, let's let's um let's let's get this started. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the first of Wiki Education's monthly speaker series. Um, if you recall, when you went to register, there's going to be a few other upcoming events, so keep an eye out for those um, as well. But today is our first uh, our first um, series in in the panel. So um, today is we're going to be talking about how teaching with Wikipedia revolutionizes higher education classrooms. I am Helene Blumenthal, Senior Program Manager at Wiki Education, and I am joined today by three amazing panelists who I've had um, the great pleasure of working with for, for many years now. So let me go ahead and introduce those people. Um, Helen Choi is Senior Lecturer of Engineering Writing at the University of Southern California's Viterbi School of Engineering. Nanette Coleman is a PhD candidate in the Department of Sociology at the University of California, Berkeley, and Abir Ward is writing program lecturer at Boston University. Um, thank you again to Helen, Nanette, and Abir for joining me today. As always, I love working with you guys, so this is a, a real treat for me to get to, to speak to you. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. The session is being recorded and we will make that available at some point after the program. If you have uh, questions, please do put them in the Q&A or in the chat. We, we do plan on leaving some time at the end for Q&A um, and we will get to those. And my, we're also joined by my colleague Sage, um, who will be uh, helping me manage this, um, this webinar and helping me troubleshoot some of the technical stuff. So thank you, Sage, as well. Uh, before I jump into the actual roundtable, this will be a roundtable format today. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody understands the context for today's conversation. Some of you might be familiar with the work of Wiki Education. Some of you may not. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, who Wiki Education is and what we do and what we're going to be speaking about today. Um, Wiki Education, we are a small nonprofit organization, and our mission, broadly speaking, is to connect what I like to call knowledge communities, so universities, colleges, um, cultural institutions such as archives and museums with the open knowledge movement that we all know of as Wikipedia. We do this by working with subject matter experts as well as uh, their students who often have access to information that's behind paywalls for much of the population at large um, to get that information onto Wikipedia. Um, in a nutshell, we strive to make Wikipedia a more um, accurate, reliable, and equitable space by making knowledge available um, to the public at large. Um, so the program that we're going to be speaking about in particular today is called the Wikipedia Student Program or the Wikipedia Assignment, which is what I more commonly refer to it as. It's a pretty simple but powerful concept. Uh, faculty, like the ones you'll hear from today, have their students um, contribute to Wikipedia as an assignment in their course. Uh, they do this either in addition to or um, uh, in lieu of a traditional writing assignment like a term paper. Um, the program has been around since 2010. In that time, we've worked with over 6,000 courses across 800 different institutions in the US and in Canada. Um, if you are outside of the US and Canada, we can connect you to um, uh, local education resources there to work with Wikipedia. Um, we have worked with over 115,000 students who have collectively added to over 130, excuse me, to 100, over 130,000 articles on Wikipedia, um, and they have added over 100 million words to Wikipedia, and we actually checked that is more, that is now more than two print editions of Encyclopedia Britannica. Simply put, when given the chance, students can have an immense impact on open knowledge and can have a real stake in today's uh, media and information landscape. So with that, I'm going to start this roundtable. Uh, the way this is going to work is I'm going to pose questions to our panelists. Each question is going to have a main respondent, um, and the other two panelists can, can follow up if they have something to add to that. But for the first question, I'm going to pose it to everybody. Um, and that is how and why did you decide to um, adopt the Wikipedia assignment? And in which courses have you taught with Wikipedia? Uh, why don't we start with you, Abir, on that one? Okay, hi, thank you, Helene, for uh, all this valuable information. You know, you participate in Wikipedia education, but then you, you do not realize the big impact this work has on education and knowledge production. 
So I first started when I started implementing Wikipedia education when I was still teaching at the American University of Beirut, AUB. I was at a conference in digital humanities and uh, the head of the university libraries approached me and said, did you know that Renaissance Arab poets have little digital presence and no presence on Wikipedia? I, I was in shock and did my research and found absolutely nothing. Of course, I found a, a Wikipedia article about Khalil Gibran, but it's because he's Lebanese American and is celebrated in the US. Uh, so I decided to remedy that situation. I spoke to Dr. Matthew Vetter, who was my professor at the time uh, at in my PhD program, and he's a great Wikipedia scholar. So I told him I wanted to address this gap in knowledge and have my students work on creating Wikipedia articles about prom prominent Arab figures mostly poets, authors, artists, and he immediately knew what to do. He put me in touch with Helene, and uh, this was in 2018. And since then, I've been able to create Turoth, an initiative to help bridge this knowledge gap. Uh, we've partnered with Art and Feminism to focus on Arab women in specific, and we've received numerous funds and grants to help us with this initiative. So this is how uh, uh, Wikipedia education became part of my class. Awesome. Thank you, Abir. Uh, why don't we go to you, Nanette? So uh, I'd say my engagement um, with Wiki Education and, and, and this approach to um, uh, teaching students and also uh, showing them the possibilities of their impact outside of the classroom beyond the ivory tower started quite by accident. Uh, Helene has heard this story. I believe there was pizza offered in the library. And as a graduate student, you know, a t-shirt and a free t-shirt or pizza is, is, is going to get attention. Uh, so someone from one of your colleagues from uh, your, your, your office was teaching about Wikipedia and the ways that you could use it in the classroom. It was co-sponsored by our Berkeley Library and also uh, the Center for Teaching and Learning. And I was just enamored. Uh, at the time, we had, I believe, the first Wiki, Wikipedia in residence at our at our university, uh, who also presented uh, the, the scope and greater possibilities of, of, of incorporating this into the classroom. I used it for the first time in a remote class that I taught on the East Coast uh, called uh, Sociology of Mass Media. And after getting that experience and, and engaging with students uh, in that space, I, I decided that it would be it would be part of, of, of my work going forward. So my uh, iteration of uh, of the of the Wikipedia assignment actually happens outside of the classroom. Uh, it's uh, it's part of uh, the larger work of my research lab, uh, the Interdisciplinary Research Group on Privacy at Berkeley. Uh, and uh, joining Abir, uh, we, we have also uh, had the fortune of receiving grants and a lot of support from the university and, and some accolades for our, our work to increase the number of women of color in particular and people of color editing Wikipedia. Uh, and also, so we work on that knowledge gap, that, that content and knowledge gap. And then we also work to expand uh, access to articles on uh, sort of technologically innovative topics in privacy, cybersecurity and surveillance. So I stumbled into this quite accidentally, uh, and then uh, have, have have found uh, sort of pr incredible interactions with uh, with Helene and the staff over there, uh, and and had the chance to pour into students in this topic. Awesome, thank you, Nanette and Helen. Hi, everybody. Um, well, I started teaching with the Wikipedia assignment in two th thousand nineteen, um, and so far, um, it's been embedded in upper division composition courses for engineering students. So um, this is a course that all engineering students have to take. And it's basically a, like a traditional um, upper division composition course, but they have to take it for graduation. Um, and so, so far we've managed to introduce this assignment as a group assignment in 23 courses um, and about 450 or so students have participated since then. Um, and the, the reason why uh, I wanted to introduce this um, to engineering students was if there were ever a group of reluctant writers, this is the group. <laughs> and um, like, you know, Abir and Nanette said that the assignment is super exciting because it's public facing um, and it kind of 
leverages all the skills that students are working on, like their writing skills, their research skills, their you know close reading skills as well. Um, but I really wanted to use it for the collaboration and the public facing elements of the assignment um, so that students felt like their class work mattered um, and had public impact. And so, um, you know, those are some of the reasons why I decided to, you know, give it a try. I, you know, it wasn't like super easy at the start, I have to say, <laughs> but once um, I managed to sort of teach myself and learn from the students about, you know, how best to proceed, um, it's become a really fun part of the semester for me. Awesome, thank you um, to all of you. And I, I love how like all of you talked about that there's so many different ways of um, incorporating this assignment. Um, okay, well, Helen, the next, <laughs> um, let's stick with you. Um, okay. the, uh, the, the next question, and again, um, Abir and Nanette, you know, um, please feel free to, to follow up um, if, you, if you have um, something to add. Helen, um, why do you continue to teach with Wikipedia in your courses? Um like I said, like it's students love it. I mean, it's it's one of the highlights of the semester because um, it's they're not just writing to me, they're writing to, you know, everyone who reads Wikipedia. Um, but like more on a practical level, you know, during the pandemic, it sort of taught me that this is an assignment. And I think Nanya talked about how it can be a remote assignment as well. This is it's very kind of flexible in terms of, you know, um, in-person classes, synchronous, asynchronous. Um, it's like a very special assignment in that way because it's all, you know, takes place on a digital platform, which is, you know, Wikipedia itself. You know, you can make changes at your own pace and at your own time, and then other editors do the same. So in that way, it's it's a it's a highly sort of flexible assignment. And I, I think someone is in our um, seminar, um, uh, Malavika Shetty, and she and I actually uh, wrote this article about, you know, how this assignment um, was, you know, really a valuable teaching tool during the pandemic. But um, in addition to that, another reason why I really um, love having Wikipedia in the classroom is that during that time, I am not just the instructor, but I'm a fellow Wikipedian. And so that sort of um, traditional hierarchy that's in the classroom kind of dissipates a little bit. And I'm just one of the other people sort of contributing to whatever articles we happen to be working on. So for those, you know, brief weeks that we're working on this, um, you know, I can help them or, you know, contribute to research and writing as well. So that's one way, like, I approach the assignment. Not all instructors do that, but I, I have found, like, this is a wonderful way for me to um, kind of model certain, you know, writing skills and research skills, not as the instructor, but as, like, a fellow contributor to the encyclopedia. Um, you know, I'll jump in real quick and answer. Yep, uh, go ahead, Nanette. Well. And I just wanted to mention, I see a hand up uh, uh, for folks. Uh, remember, you can use the Q&A uh, function to ask us questions live and we can answer those. So I see Olivia's got her hand up. Hi, Olivia. Uh, so I think the reason why I've continued using it is it, it's, uh, it fills resource gaps, I think, that sometimes can exist in higher educational institutions and spaces. Back in the dark ages, when I was a student, we had a requirement to do a library skills training in order to graduate. So you, you'd end up exploring the library, learning about the Dewey Decimal System research, uh, you know, sources, all of that stuff. And, um, and, I, and I feel like uh, sometimes students arrive in the classroom with, with, without a, a means to, to learn those things, or you know, there's just so many different levels of, of education that students are coming from when they, when they arrive in, in, my, in my classroom. And so it's a, it's a way to equalize the student experience and also help to empower them to answer questions in, in, in their work with me, but then also on their own, uh, especially in a, a universe of exceptional misinformation and disinformation. Uh, it gives them the tools that they need to, to, to be able to respond in their classrooms and in their life to things that, that they can feel doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, the, the empowerment piece, um, uh, just the way that I see students sit up and just uh, find 
find their 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 own path in this work. I think that that makes me excited about doing this again for like the eighth year. Uh, we've been doing it for consistently for this will be our eighth year uh, with uh, Helene and the good folks over there. So, um, well, Nanette, since you're since you're going, <laughs> you're going to be the next person. Um, yeah. Thank you for making my transitions easy here. Um, That's what I'm here I for. Do, <laughs> I do want to I do want to move things along here for the for the sake of time. Um, so, and and I think you know I think you already just started alluding to this in, in what you just said, but maybe you can talk about it a little bit more in depth. Um, so the Wikipedia assignment is is inherently a public facing activity, and I'm curious if you could talk about how that affects your students, their work, and even you know your role in the class. Yeah, I, I think I think this assignment lives up to the ideals that that higher education presents about giving students that platform and education in order to go out and to shape the things that matter to them, uh, whether that's in their local community or, or the larger world. And I think it does so in a way that provides training wheels. So, um, you know, by by setting up that uh, your your account and I always encourage them not to use their real name. Uh, you know, and you can get out there and, and, and edit and do things in a space that is safe uh, so they can, you know, add a comma, uh, you know, add a paragraph and and it gives them a chance to see the possibility of of what their public participation in that, you know, that world stage could be like in a safe environment. And it's, uh, you know, not naming any particular platforms, especially ones that have changed names recently. Um, but you know, there, there's a way that young people can can reach out and add to the conversation and change discourse in a way that wasn't possible um, when you know back in the dark ages when I was in college. Uh, and I think we're helping them to recognize and realize that um, as a tool and a skill, and but also understand the responsibility. So, um, and I'll tell you, it was terrifying for me that first time to go out there and add something publicly. Uh, and uh, and I, I love what Helen said. I'm so in it with them. I get to continue to be. Um, a, a student, um, you know, uh, so it's just incredible opportunity. Yeah. That's awesome. Abir, Helen, any, anything you guys want to add to that? Okay. Yeah. And I just want to, I just want to back that up by saying like, I hear every semester this sort of notion that the Wikipedia assignment kind of turns like instructors and into, into more like mentors um, and, and that they're like, just really like working right alongside their students and going through it with them. It kind of democratizes the classroom a little bit. Um, okay, awesome. So, um, you know, Abir, this next question, uh, I'm gonna let you take the lead on. Um, can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what are some of the concrete skills and maybe some of the, maybe some of the less tangible ones that students uh, learn from, from the Wikipedia assignment? Uh, so, um, uh, before I answer your question, I also want to say hi to Malavika, who's my <laughs> colleague and, and, and friend. Um, and uh, so what our work has yielded was, among many things, a community, a sense of responsibility to bridge knowledge gaps, and a lot of pride in our work. Um, which uh, has garnered over 18 million views since we first started. Uh, some of the less tangible skills learned uh, include how to navigate power dynamics and assert our presence. Uh, let me explain. So the, the Arab culture depends on oral history. So a lot of our knowledge remains undocumented and missing because uh, entities like Wikipedia do not acknowledge the validity of oral history. And this is a form of injustice in knowledge uh, where only the written word has any value. It's, it also contributes to linguistic injustice. This has encouraged the library at the American University of Beirut, for example, as a result of this and what we face um, working with Wikipedia, uh, to start digitizing oral histories. Uh, so a lot of... Uh, uh, the times we as knowledge producers have to negotiate and push back uh, when Wikipedia editors, for example, come and say, oh, you cannot write an article about this person uh, because uh, they are not notable. And the reason we do not consider them notable is because we've researched them and found nothing about them on the internet. So how do you answer this without saying, duh, <laughs> this is why we're doing this to begin with? So in short, uh, a very important skill students learn 
uh, or have learned about um, is the politics of representation and how to maneuver, negotiate, and harness this power. I I um I I love that. <laughs> it actually leads very well into our next our, our next question. Nanette or Helen, do you have anything to to follow up there from what Avira said about kind of the, the skills that students um learn? That was a mic, that was a mic drop for me. I have nothing. Yeah. To uh, well, Nanette, Nanette, actually, I'm gonna the <laughs> the next question is yours, and I think this um this this just leads very well into this. You guys are making my job really easy here as moderator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so then my next question actually is, uh, you know, knowledge equity making making Wikipedia a more equitable space is a big driving force here at Wiki, Wiki Education, and you know there's lots of ways in which Wikipedia has content or knowledge gaps, and some of that is just, um, you know, more academic subjects are are less well covered, you know, more obscure topics, but a lot of that is around um, some of the more typical. Uh, topics that had been left out of the historical record that Abir just mentioned. Um, and so one of the, our driving forces here at Wiki Education is to is to fill in those knowledge equity gaps and and to um, and to get those topics that have been sort of um, left out of the record onto Wikipedia um, within within sort of the bounds of Wikipedia, which which Abir mentioned. So Nanette, I was wondering and and and, and Abir, I think you can probably follow up here, um, not to put you on the spot, but um, and Helen, I'm, I'm, you may have something to say about this as well. Um, what are what are ways in which your students have maybe engaged with some of these knowledge equity gaps, um, either in content uh, or in you know in the in the fact that they themselves might be um, uh, you know not representative of, of the typical Wikipedia uh, volunteer. So uh, one of the things that uh, initially grabbed me about this endeavor. Um, was the number eight percent? So when we we first engaged uh, um, with you all, um, we were told that the majority of people that edited Wikipedia did not look like those of us that are on this panel right now. So it was eight percent encompassing, I think, all underrepresented minorities and women. And uh, and when I when I started to to work on on the idea of doing this assignment, I sort of put a call out. Uh, to students to to get a sense of who might be interested, and it was almost all women and almost all women of color that arrived with an interest from across every every different discipline you can imagine. Like some of my favorite pieces that we've been we've created are on things that I don't even understand, like DNA encryption, um, or you know, my, and, and Helene knows one of my other favorites is postmortem privacy that we've worked on. Um, so you know, so not only were we working on topics where general folks out in the community don't necessarily have access, you know, a lot of these articles are peer reviewed and behind an academic firewall, so you can live across the street and not be able to access the information that I can being in, sort of in the university. So we started sort of very simply uh, with topics that we thought just everyday people would be interested in. It, it was motivated by one of my students. Um, who said, you know, my my parent, I have a younger brother, and my parents bought this toy uh, for him, and it connects to the internet. Uh, and and the cl the classic example that's coming up a lot right now, if anybody who's seen the Barbie movie, is the Barbie doll that used to have a camera in it that people realized, oh, that's probably a bad idea. Um, you know, so, um, you know, and I, my parents want to learn about this, but they they don't know where to look. So we started by translating academic articles on privacy, cybersecurity, and surveillance for a larger audience on topics of interest to just, you know, the general community. And it's expanded beyond that to several hundred students and, and you know, and millions of edits. And I, I, I think we're still, I think we're number three for a contribution uh, at, on Wikipedia uh, uh, from Wikia, the last I checked. Um, but uh, yeah, it's twofold for us. It's it's the people that edit and also the topics. And you know, I'm I'm a little biased. You know, my dissertation is on privacy and cybersecurity. But I think it's 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 one of the the new and important um, issues of our time that crosses into things like civil rights. Like there's a Henrietta Lacks problem that we all kind of have uh, with our our data and information. And and my students are helping to work on that. So love the opportunity, as I'm going to keep saying. <laughs> Abir, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about this as well. I mean, you already have a little bit, but I, I know you, 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 your students have very much tackled sort of, you know, um, these people have, who have, are definitely underrepresented um, in sort of the public knowledge sphere. Could you mind talking a little bit more about it? 
Yeah, so when I was still uh, a PhD student, I was <clears throat> also part of the first batch of uh, Four C's Wikipedia fellows, and uh, I was working with Dr. Charles Bazerman. And we were trying to find ways to put knowledge on Wikipedia, especially because of all the pushback that we were facing and articles being brought down and and all that. And, uh, you know, how, how do you convince a Wikipedia editor? You can't convince anyone. You need to have proof that this person is notable. And so um, uh, we when I was working as a Four Seas Wikipedia fellow, I was also working on translation from uh, other languages. So translating Wikipedia articles from English to Arabic and vice versa. And so an idea occurred to us, uh, me and my students, uh, what about we start uh, using the sources, all the books that we have in Arabic to write about uh, these scholars uh, and Arabic Wikipedia. And so we can then translate it from Arabic uh, to English. Uh, and so we started doing that, but then the pushback was even greater. Uh, so the difficulties that we're we're facing, it's not just about knowledge and knowledge production and having all this knowledge on the internet. It's also a lot about power. Uh, and so this was uh, somehow motivating to students at times, but it was also, um, you know, I mean, at, at times they just lost hope of, of ever being able uh, to create articles uh, about us. And of course, you know, they had difficulty uh, wrapping their brain around why we're not allowed to produce articles about us. Uh, you know, from an insider's perspective, this is, uh, to them, it seemed like the, the greatest idea because who knows about us more than we do. Uh, but then of course, you know, um, knowledge and the way we approach knowledge and dissect knowledge and uh, consume knowledge is very different uh, across cultures. And uh, so I, even though as a transnational and a multilingual, I've always known that, it wasn't at the forefront of my you know, thinking. And, and so <laughs> it has opened a lot of doors to see how we negotiate some of the, these power dynamics. Uh, and it's still an ongoing struggle, <laughs> I have to say. And I, I want to jump in real quick one uh, yeah. on that point too because uh, I forgot we do translation as well, and and I think I think that's so in, incredibly important, um, and, and we try and go in both directions. One of my students noted that um, it's it's pretty common to go from English to other languages, but there's so much knowledge, and it helps upend you know sort of colonial intentions to go in both directions. So Abir, thank you for that reminder. Thank you. Um. And I just want to say that, like, you know, right, we, Wikipedia is by no means some perfect panacea, but I but I think, you know, some of these, and, and I'm and I'm not like underestimating these frustrations at all, but um I think there are some real opportunities for some really interesting conversations to have with your students um about, you know, about the limitations of Wikipedia, why Wikipedia has its biases, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so like yeah. Anyway, there's just lots of opportunities to talk about um, knowledge production, the power, you know, the power dynamics behind knowledge production. Um, okay. Well, let's shift gears a, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but I think I think this 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 comes up I think throughout a, a lot of what we talk about here. But Helen, I'm gonna um, <clears throat> pivot to you for the next question. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we, you know, you guys have all been teaching with Wikipedia for quite some time, and I'm curious. Um, how this experience of teaching with Wikipedia has either affected your pedagogy um, or even your own research, your own expertise, or even your own feelings about, uh, you know, the role of open knowledge in your particular field? Um, when, well, it's taught me a lot about, you know, my students. I can, you know, I think I trust them more, <laughs> um, which I don't know what that says about me as a person, but I, I do feel like um, I, I feel like I can uh, trust them to be better digital citizens, um, you know, for the most part, like, you know, they really do want to um, engage in work that, um, you know, improves things for people. And, um, but one of the things I did learn about my students, and Nanya, like, referred to it previously in terms of library skills, 
I am seeing that even in their uh, research papers and such, they are um, they need more opportunities to learn how to um, conduct research more thoroughly and sort of vet resources and references and sources. And obviously, Wikipedia is a great sort of um, avenue toward thinking about the types of sources that are acceptable or access to those sources and, and that type of um, information literacy. So to that end, and, and because, you know, this has kind of been a trend of, you know, sort of not the decline, but, you know, the, the need for more um, sort of honed research skills, um, especially, you know, at, as Nanya said, in, in light of all the misinformation and disinformation that students receive um, nowadays, that um, we've proposed a new course on information literacy that is really grounded in, you know, foundational like library skills, research skills. Um, and um, we're really trying to get it approved as a general education course. And you, we're going to kind of use Wikipedia and the way it kind of interacts with sources. And, you know, why is this notable? You know, why is this source deemed unacceptable? Um, and maybe it's time to change some of those standards, but like a real engagement in sources and verifiable sources is sort of what we're aiming for in this in this course. So in in that way, I think, you know, Wikipedia has really opened my eyes to kind of not just what students need, but, you know, what perhaps we need in our sort of general uh, education in terms of navigating all the challenging types of information that we see every day. And then also offering students sort of a, a way to discern and and sort of parse through all of that um, information by giving them very tangible skills in terms of research. That's great. Yeah, I uh, I have heard many, many times in my like, you know, um, since I've been in this role, like that the that the Wikipedia assignment is the first time that their students actually go to the library or yeah. like engage with the library or like reach out to a university librarian, um, which is you know, uh, sad and amazing and all the, all, all the things. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, thank, thank you, Helen. Did Netterby or anything to, to follow up there with? Abir, there's a question for you in the Q&A. Yeah, I think we'll wait for the Q&A session. Uh, yeah, after. yeah, why don't we, yeah. I think, yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to the Q&A pretty soon. Okay, um, well, well, Abir, actually, let's, let's go back to you then though. Um, you know, there might be uh, some people here today or some people watching this video um, who have not yet taught with Wikipedia, but are interested in doing so. So I'm kind of curious as somebody who's, you know, done this many, many times at this point, you know, what would be a, a piece of advice you would give somebody um, teaching with Wikipedia for the first time? Uh, yeah, this, I think this is a great question because uh, every time I teach with Wikipedia, I do the exercises with the students. So my advice is do the exercises with the students as they do them. So you understand what's being asked of them. And so you can help them learn the skills that they are expected to learn. Also, uh, students sometimes skip exercises in large blocks of instruction or instructions leading them to mess up later. Um, so if you know what they're doing and you know it well, you can remind them of what is expected of them and what they should keep in mind. Um, uh, I sometimes do the first maybe exercise with them in class as I project, uh, I projected, um, and, uh, the second advice is not to worry or fret. You don't need to be well-versed in HTML or in wikis. This stuff is simple and very easy to learn because of the way it's designed on Wikipedia education, it makes it a breeze. And then you also get a lot of support from uh, uh, Wikipedia education uh, folks. And also uh, I think you can have a, like a mentor. So it's, it's great. It's great. I, I can't I can't tell you how amazing it is. So if your fear is, oh, you know, I need to learn this. And it's so much fun and it's very rewarding for sure. Um, you know, I um, so I think we're doing OK on time. So, so Nanette and Helen, since um, I, I'm going to ask you guys to, to jump in on this one, too, if you're OK with that, if you sure. could give a piece of advice to somebody running this for the first time. 
Yeah, two, two things I'd say if you have students uh, spread out, uh, if you're doing the remote option and have students in other countries, uh, checking in with the, you know, the folks at WikiEd on challenges with access uh, under situation under certain situations. Uh, it's useful to think about that in advance uh, if, if that's something you're doing. I would also encourage you, and this is more of second second time uh, recommendation than first, but incorporate students who have done the assignment with you the previous year to help mentor and advise the ones the next year. Uh, I've found that students take incredible pride in what they've created. I, I've definitely had people tell me their grandparents know about their page and monitor it regularly. Um, but, uh, you know, thinking about long-term sort of continuity across years of students, uh, I have students that have now graduated that still log into our portal and help edit. <laughs> um, you know, just, just thinking about the, the, the bigger picture and opportunities. Great. Helen, what, what, what would be something you would maybe share to somebody, um, doing this for the first time? Well, I mean, the technology part is not the hard part. <laughs> um, the the thing that kind of uh, the thing that I worried about the most, and I think we alluded to, to some of that today, were like how would outside editors react to my students' work, you know, and and how will I handle, you know, things if work gets taken down um, and things like that. So I was more worried about like just the so sort of the uncontrollable people. <laughs> response. Um, but I, I will say one thing I have noticed in the short time that I've done this is that it kind of seems like the external editors, and, and I could be wrong about this, in general seem less hostile towards student editors than they used to be. Uh, I, I know at first I noticed that when an article, when they knew that, you know, the students were working on it because they could see on the talk page, um, they would be like like vigilant oversight over that page. Um, and even the smallest things would be sort of reverted or um, challenged in some way. Now, I think some of those editors who I kind of I, I can recognize now by their username, they sort of wait um, to see how it is. Um, and sometimes they do revert and, and things like that. But I will say like their changes are valid you know sometimes my students will put something up there and I'm like did you not do the training I told you not to do that and so but they learn a lot that way I have that's one thing I, I will say I have learned to welcome the external um you know editors being part of the mentoring and sort of the collaborative process because I would say the vast majority of the things that they say in the talk page or otherwise is pretty true and so it helps uh, students to hear those things from people other than me <laughs> and I've been haranguing them for 15 weeks but at this point so they're sick of me but <laughs> when they hear it from someone else I think you know they sort of listen um, in a different way and so I, I would say like you know the technology part I feel like wiki education you know completely um, has your back you can email them night or day <laughs> with any question that you have which is really true and they'll, they'll help you um, and then in terms of sort of that unpredictable external um, uh, feedback I would just say to just welcome it I mean that's part of the learning process as well uh, I have to share uh, an experience which happened to me last semester. I was teaching a writing course and the theme uh, was linguistic injustice. And so the students collaborated on creating an article on linguistic injustice, which was uh, not fixed. So that it, well, once we published it, uh, like a couple of weeks later, right before it hit 1 million views, it was taken down. No explanation, no explanation whatsoever. So I haven't had this. Uh, so I've had a different experience with external <laughs> editors, I guess. Uh, but yeah, in the past, they've been kind of helpful or sometimes a little bit harsh, but understandably, especially with students who are multilingual students or speakers of English as a third language who are writing a Wikipedia article in English. So, but yeah, I guess experiences vary. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to jump in and, and uh, agree on your point on language because I, I I have students who are so excited at the prospect of using the you know high school Spanish they learned and never got to speak and <laughs> and the, the process of writing in a in another language uh, poorly uh, sometimes uh, is is beneficial to them and, and it's also sort of helping to expand some of the pages in, in, in other languages so. Uh, I've also had a mixed bag of experiences. 
<laughs> with the professional professional Wikipedians and, and deeply glad they're out there. And uh, yeah. So I, <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, I think like, I think the nature of what your students write about will uh, will have a big bearing on on the types of reactions. So so at beer, I think I think your students, you know, they tend to write uh, on those subjects that really bump up against those um, those knowledge equity gaps that we were talking about, right? And and so yeah. so you you you're you know so I think which makes sense. So you would have a different experience than you know Helen, which I know I know your students write about a range of topics um, as well, but maybe maybe a little less controversial or. Um, you know, that said, I will say that, you know, um, yeah, we wiki education is here night or day. We don't sleep, um, apparently, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, um, to help you guys out. So like that, that is quite literally what we're here for. We are the bridge between you guys and, and the, and the general Wikipedia editing community. Um, and, it, and if you ever, ever run into a problem like that is, that is quite literally our job. It is what we're paid to do, um, to provide you and your students with support. Um, and, you know, and and that's why you know listen what one of Wikipedia's uh, pillars is assume good faith, um, and and you know most of the people ninety nine percent of the people on operating on Wikipedia including you and your students and the volunteers are really there to make Wikipedia the best it can be. Sometimes people have different interpretations of what the best it can be is, um, and that's where we kind of you know run run into some problems. But um, but everybody really is is you know trying trying to make Wikipedia. Um, a place where people can come for reliable and accurate information. Um, I, I know it's more complex than that, but it is a, but it, it is pretty critical, I think, to convey that to your students um, going into the project. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna do, let's do one final question here and then maybe we can get to some of the Q&A uh, questions. Um, I was wondering, and this, this is to all of you, um, is there a moment in your, you know, many iterations of teaching with Wikipedia that maybe stand out to you that you'd like to share? Uh, why uh, don't we, yeah, go, sure, go ahead, uh, Amir. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, the answer is definitely yes. What, what, see, when we produced, I think the first six articles, uh, the first semester I integrated Wikipedia education in my class. So we created six articles about notable Arab figures. Uh, and at the time I wasn't working on solely producing uh, with my students articles about uh, Arab women, which we started doing later uh, because we felt a greater need there. You know, the gender gap is very well documented, uh, but it's, um, and can you imagine how it is in other parts of the world <laughs> if it is that bad over here? So when we first created, when we created the first six articles and uh, these articles garnered 14.5 million views in the weeks that followed and then to have to receive an email from wikipedia education saying congrats uh, was such a great motivation to, to the students uh, who felt seen uh, and recognized and appreciated and so even the community around us celebrated this big success the students felt so empowered and they came back the next semester <clears throat> As Nanette mentioned, you know, they came back to support the new students with the project, and we quickly grew as a support network and community um, that continued to grow over the years. Uh, so that that was just so heartwarming. Uh, Helen, any 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 moments that stand out for you? Um, I would say, you know, in in general, I try to pick you know, when we sort of curate the list of articles for students to pick from, you know, I put like, you know, 50 or 60 of them on there. And one semester, um, I put Zoom on there. And this was before the pandemic. And it's a nice, quiet article. Um, and I, I wasn't really <laughs> sure, what is this Zoom thing? Um, and then student, a group of students selected it. And then, um, you know, the timing was such that while we were working on it, it was and the pandemic happened. And so this very quiet article that had, you know, maybe like 27 views a day or something just exploded. Um, and had, you know, I, I forgot how many, but you know, in the hundreds of thousands. Um, and my students, it just happened to coincide with when they were trying to do their edits. Um, 
but it was it was so fun to see how the article develops, you know, when so many editors are interested in something. Um, and I mean, we would just put the article up and just keep refreshing to see how it would change in real time. Um, and um, we had a lot of fun trying to figure out like, you know, um, is there a way for us to add, you know, certain information in some way? And then fortunately for us, <laughs> we had a terrible Zoom bombing incident <laughs> that um, was covered in lots of national news, but we kind of knew about it before. So we were able to sort of, um, you know, wait a few hours. And then when we saw it, then we were able to add that. And then that was sort of, you know, broken off into its own article but just from doing something like that they really learned about how wow what's you know the stuff I do you know really matters to many people and so I, I would say you know for the most part like they really try very hard to um to do their best work in this way and and on the point about the grandparents you know my students will like tell their grandparents you know read the data science then you can learn what you know what I study at you know school and I you know happen to have contributed to the article so um I, I would say you know you know those are some of the highlights in terms of you know being so excited it's the first time they're excited they're not excited about my other assignments but they're excited about this one that's awesome I I love when like all of a sudden a, a student's Wikipedia contribution becomes like very timely and relevant. Um, that happens not to, not, not pretty, pretty commonly actually. And Nanette, any, anything, any moments that stand out for you? Yes. So, uh, so we have a commitment to, uh, to reading and elevating the work of women and women of color that, that operate in the privacy, cybersecurity and surveillance space. I think in um, a lot of traditional syllabi, you see that the last week, uh, you know, there's the, you know, you review all the dead white guys and then you get to those at the end. So um, I try to have my students read uh, people like Denise Anthony, Latanya Sweeney, Teresa Miller. And um, for my students, they, um, in, on two occasions, they got to meet those people. So they are editing pages about people that only existed on paper. And, um, and I, I was, I was deeply tickled. We had a, we hosted a panel discussion on new privacy books and, and Denise was there and they were just giddy uh, about talking about a sociology of privacy, her piece, which ends up being uh, in a lot of articles that we edit. Uh, Teresa Miller, uh, before her passing, also joined us uh, in, a, in a session to talk about her life and her work on privacy. Uh, and then uh, uh, something similar uh, sort of with Latanya La Sweeney. So I, I love, I love when um, those people become real for them, not just on paper and the pride they they feel in that. Uh, I mean, they all know that, especially Latanya Sweeney is an academic shero of mine. And so uh, I, it was fun to be able to share that with them. That's great. Okay. Thank you, um, Joe Beer, Nanette, and Helen. This has been amazing. Why don't we switch over to the Q&A here? I think right now I have one question. Um, uh, but so, so uh, people, please feel free to put uh, more questions into the Q&A. Um, Sage, do you want to read that one out? Sure. Uh, Catherine Marino uh, gives a shout out to Abir's comments about bringing light to people and events and histories that haven't been acknowledged. Um, and she asks about um, using oral histories and other kinds of primary sources as the basis for students' Wikipedia entries. Uh, she says that she was under the impression that students needed to have secondary sources as the basis for the text of their entries. So is it possible to use primary sources like oral histories for writing articles? Thank you so much, Catherine, for this question. Sorry, Helena. Yeah, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. You, you go first and then I'll, I'll follow up. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, I have to thank you for the question because this is a very important question because you bring uh, into light uh, a, a, a very important point, which is that oral histories are considered primary sources. Not necessarily. So when we talk about oral histories in the Arab world, uh, we're talking about uh, not necessarily just primary sources, uh, but also how, like meta commentary, uh, why there is this phenomenon, or uh, why do we have 
certain specific traditions. It's not about the tradition itself, but also about the why and the history of where this came from, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I would consider them as maybe meta commentary, maybe. Um, and uh, yes, definitely Wikipedia has uh, a, a clear clause on not using oral histories because this is not considered you know, a reliable source. But then, you know, this is at the at the core of linguistic injustice, because basically we are discrediting and discounting knowledge from other places because their method for knowledge production is very different from the way we're used to it. Uh, science is done differently uh, in some places. And, uh, you know, even rhetoric, I sometimes talk to my students about rhetor rhetoric and rhetorical devices and how these differ from the way things are done in the West and uh, the rhetorical tradition, how different it is from uh, places in, in West Africa or North Africa or the Middle East. Uh, so I hope that kind of touches upon, you know, uh, or answers the question for you. Yeah, and, and Abir, like, I, I think that's absolutely right. And so, you know, the simple answer is like, no, they're not supposed to use primary sources, right? Like, so, so um, you know, we could, it, but like these things, these, as, as I think you're pointing out, like when it comes to writing about, um, you know, non-Western peoples and populations, like these things become a little bit more complex. Um, and so it's like, you know, the simple answer is no, they should not be using primary sources, but, but like, again, we have to think about like, what, what are the ways in which we can, you know, um, try to, to remedy some of these, some of these equity gaps. And, um, and maybe that's thinking a little bit differently about sources and, and creatively, but this is, but this is why I think a beer, like your students run up against some of the problems that, that maybe Nanette's or, or Helen's students don't, um, so anyway, but it, 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 it's a, it, it's a complicated question. And, and I think it, and I think it, you know, poses some really interesting questions to your students and, and potential areas for discussions, you know, I mean, there's a reason Wikipedia doesn't use things like oral, oral histories um, or primary sources, right. And that's to preserve, uh, you know, the, the, the integrity of the information there. They want to be right. The, one of the key things is that the, that the information has to be verifiable. Um, and that just becomes a little more challenging to do it in an oral history context. So, you know, there are reasons for, for Wikipedia's policies around privileging written sources, um, but, you know, there's also consequences to that. And so it can, I think it just, can just lead to some very interesting conversations. Are there um, other questions? Yeah, yeah, we had another question um, from uh, Malavika and she asks, uh, she says, I was wondering whether any of you have had success convincing your colleagues to adopt Wikipedia in their classes? If yes, how did you go about it? Oh, great. I have not <laughs> had any success doing this. So. <laughs> That's my answer. Um, I, I will say the only sort of success I've had in terms of, you know, building alliances in this way um, has been to work with our science and engineering librarian. Um, and um, she's the one that is, will actually be, you know, if we get this information literacy course passed, um, I'll be teaching the course, co-teaching with her. But other than the library, I haven't had too much success. I, I have to comment on Nanette's <laughs> comment about creating a new oral history Wikipedia. And I think this is a brilliant idea uh, uh -huh. to just uh, do document more. Um, what's going on in the world. I want to say, uh, Malavika, I think the the way I was able to convince some of my colleagues to join was uh, uh, just because we had a, a, you know, a larger cause to work towards and uh, kind of the community was already built. And then we started Turath, which is the initiative to create Wikipedia articles. Uh, and Turath is an Arabic word that means uh, heritage. Uh, and so uh, I think th after the project started succeeding and garnering a lot of attention because I wanted to write about the project, but, you know, of course, you know, we couldn't. So we started, uh, we attracted a lot of attention from the media and newspaper articles were written about this. And so people became interested. And so this is how I was able to convince some of my colleagues to join. 
but it, I mean, I think I convinced maybe two. <laughs> Others were very interested, but they were a little bit hesitant because they 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 didn't know whether they were going to be able to use uh, Wikipedia, uh, especially because uh, at, in Lebanon at the time we were having a lot of problems, and especially with connectivity, internet was weak, so so many problems. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe we should we should talk more about this over lunch sometime. <laughs> uh, um, we have Wiki Education have been working on this very problem for thirteen years. <laughs> Nanette, have you have you uh, have you ever convinced anybody? No. Uh, so I I you know, I'm a graduate student, so I'm just trying to convince myself to to finish my dissertation. <laughs> so I'm I'm not in the habit of proselytizing just yet. Uh, on 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 taking up the Wikipedia course, uh, I'm uh, I I think people find themselves to this in very different ways, and and there's so many interesting ways to reach students. This being one, um, uh, but it's it's been a great opportunity for me. You know, e even in the like I I've been with this organization for nine years, and like I you know, when I, even nine years ago, when I first started, like, I, I felt like I heard pretty regularly the whole, like, oh, I, I would, you know, I wouldn't touch Wikipedia. It's not trustworthy. Um, I don't hear that anymore. I rarely, rarely hear that anymore. Um, so I think there has been, like, a, a, a pretty big, um, like, shift in terms of how Wikipedia is perceived in higher education, but there's, you know, it's still, it, 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 it's hard to take the leap. Um, into something that's you know unfamiliar. So that's why we have sessions like this to hopefully you know people understand that it's it, it's it's not the easiest thing, but it's not the hardest, and it's you know there's a lot of reward to be had. Um, were there we're running out of we're almost out of time here, but are there any other was there another question, Sage? Um, yes, there's a question about um, using uh, the dashboard to support a Wikipedia in the classroom or reading Wikipedia in the classroom program in Africa. Ah, um, okay. I'm going to answer in the chat. Okay. Um, well, for those of you here today who um who, who have not taught with Wikipedia, um, please visit uh actually um Sage, can you can you type this in the chat? The teach .org? Just put that link in there. Yes. Yeah, Sage will put this um link in the chat. Um, although I think most of the people who are registered here already went to our website, but. Um, we still are accepting courses for the fall 2023 term. So if this is something you want to give a try, please, please do sign up or, um, you know, um, we are accepting courses every semester. Um, is, is there, um, is there a challenge for countries on the African continent to use the Wikied platform right now? I think that was the question. Yes, I'm answering it in the chat, but I can answer it uh, for everyone. The, the short answer is that um, we are primarily familiar with and currently only support um, like higher education courses in the United States and Canada. But um, the dashboard software, um, we run another instance of it that is open for anyone in the global Wikipedia community to use. Um, it's called Programs and Events Dashboard. Um, and has settings that are less geared around the specifics of kind of like our higher education system that that we've designed a lot of the assignment defaults around. Um, and so, it, but it can be used pretty flexibly for a wide variety of things and works in um, any of the languages that Wikipedia supports. And I, I definitely host students all around the world and 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 welcome students to participate uh, in 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 my class room if if for some reason there is a barrier uh, to entry um, for folks. So please reach out if I can be useful. All right. I think with that, let's bring the session to a close. I, um, again, Nanette, Helen, Abir, thank you guys so much for doing this with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, this was a really interesting conversation, and I always love hearing from you, and I always learn new things every time. So thank you guys very much. Thank you, Sage, for facilitating the tech stuff. Thank you for hosting us. <clears throat> and you, nice Helen. to meet you, Helen and Nana. Well, thank you. And thank you, Sage. Thanks, everybody. Okay, excellent. Um, Sage, do we just end this?